Hi everyone, this is Sona. We are going to learn how we can process a simple video taken through a smartphone. This is an example of a smartphone video when we attach our telescope and smartphone through a mobile adapter. I'm just going to lower the voice so that you don't hear the background when this video was being recorded. Saturn is visible and um, you can use your mobile phone to do lucky imaging, putting it on a video mode. And also if you can increase the zoom, you will get a little bit more size of Saturn than the usual small size that you would see. So this is a sample video. This is a raw video of Saturn. Now we are going to learn in this beginners tutorial how we can use free softwares to get a very good clear image of Saturn. So let's jump into the process. Now, these are three softwares which we are going to use. One is planetary imaging pre-processing software, which is known as PIP, then Auto Stackard and Registax. So let's start PIP. Now, why we are using PIPP? For a simple reason that we have shot uh, through a smartphone. The image was not stabilized because we were manual tracking. The object was drifting. So we need image stabilization for the stacking to happen. And we can also convert the file that was in MOV because that was shot from an iPhone XS. So this is the best way to convert your MOV to an AVI, which the stacking software can use. Secondly, we are going to use two files. So let's start the usage of PIP. We're going to select join mode and we're going to select planetary. Let everything else remain default. Select your files. Add source. Uh, we go to the desktop. The folder is here. Sorry. So we're going to select both these files. The more data we have, the better results we'll have. So this is how a single frame of Saturn looks like from that video that you've just seen. So in total, we have 8,748 frames. We are going to combine. It's going to give us an output, one video in AVI format. This is in MOV format, if you can see the type. Now, uh, let's quickly do this. There is no complication. Let everything be default, as I said. Let's do it simply. Input, you don't have to change anything. Processing options, just ensure that convert color to monochrome is not switched. Uh, enable cropping is a good idea because you don't want a lot of black space around your uh, planet. It is going to do object detection parameters. It's going to ensure that the planet remains in the frame, the object you've selected planetary. So we can do a, see, it's going to select the planet. So this is all done. This is all by default. I haven't done any changes into the settings. Quality options not needed for this. Animation not needed. Output. Output you can choose AVI. Uh, we have MOV format, so MOV is not taken by order stacker. So we're going to choose AVI and then we hit to processing. It's going to take a little time and we start processing. It's going to combine both the files and uh, from the 8748 frames, it's going to work and going to throw out those frames which have partial planet or which does not have uh, any planetary image in that. So we are going to be looking at a uh, AVI video, which is going to have a centrally stabilized planet. And it is not going to have those frames which were not uh, showing the complete planet or the planet was drifting away. So it's a very, very good free software. It is going to take a while, depending on your computer configuration. Uh, my computer is pretty fast. So I am assuming it's going to take a little less than what is needed. But then I can 
skip this and I can meet you back once the processing has been done. So we are back. Now let's see what Pip has done. It has discarded the frames which had no planet, 732. It was expected, it was manual tracking and we let the planet drift. The total output frames that we're going to work with is 8012, which is very, very decent. We are going to get some good results out of it. The output frame format is AVI. So this is sorted. This is done. Let's close this. Now let's move to stacking, which is auto stack art. Again, a free software. It opens into two windows and very user friendly. You will see the windows are going to be, the tabs are going to be activated as you progress along this, we can drag and drop. We can open the file. Our file is going to be created here. The same folder that we were working from. So this is the pip AVI format. Just click on this or you can drag and drop. This is how the window shows your single frame. If you see the plus sign, this is centering the object and we are going to select planet because we are doing planetary stacking the rest of it let's leave it to default let's not do any changes here and then we press the second button as you saw the first was activated now the second button is activated it's stepwise very logical very simple to use let's press the analyze button it's going to take a little while let's see It's completely bases, you know, your computer's speed, you know, how much space you have. So it's pretty fast for us here. So buffering and analysis has only taken 15.4 seconds for 8,000 plus frames. Now analysis is done. You can see a graph. It basically shows you, you know, there's a lot of times when the seeing dips, you get bad frames. So we're just working visually seeing the graph and estimating where our good frames would be and we want to stack the majority of the good frames now it gives you three options uh, in terms of output you can select tiff png or fit i normally take tiff and also it gives you two options you can stack number of frames like you have 8000 frame you can choose to stack uh, 1000 frames you can you know have four outputs similarly frame percentage also but since the number of frame is 8,000, I would prefer to go the frame percentage way. Uh, let's stack 45% or perhaps you can do 50% as well. Uh, the other options which are to be considered in this is you can either, either you know, work at normalized stack, sharpened, RGB align. Now, sharpened is not needed because we are going to go to Registax. The sharpening is going to take place there. So I normally choose RGB align and save in the folders, the same folder that Pip was created in, it's going to automatically by default, the stacked image will land there. Now, if you see the third option is again, not activated because we have the right hand side window where we need to work. This is the frames, which it looks like. See, these are the frames, the 8,000 frames, and you can see the when i move this cursor the quality graph cursor you can see it is also moving the green line so it is showing which frame you want to select as your reference frame i'm going to select something where i can see a bit of cassini division more clearly here this looks good or maybe not okay i'm good with this you can keep it by default also that doesn't hurt but you can select uh, then you have to select your alignment points. So I'm going to select the smallest because the planet size is not that much big. The minimum brightness, uh, let it be on default. You can artificially increase the brightness. There's an option here at the moment, not needed because Saturn is quite bright in this video. So we don't need this. Normally, if you, even if you do increase the brightness automatically, you can see the Cursor, if you place the cursor here, it shows that change image brightness during preview does not affect the output. So very user friendly. Whenever you, you know, you have a doubt, you keep your cursor there. It gives you the complete information about what you're about to do. 
and I'm just going to select place AP grid automatically the software is going to place the alignment points for me you can do it manually also but uh, I prefer to do it the automated way of the software now you can see on the left hand side window the stack option is now activated meaning that we have completed the process on the right hand side window now we can come to the left hand side window and we just press stack and uh, it's going to go through a couple of sequences here reference frame alignment stacking uh, this is pretty fast considering that my laptop is uh, one TB SSD drive so it gives me fast processing results and uh, once the stacking is complete we will see the output in the same folder that we started working in in the pep folder which was created in the folder where we had the mov files so done very fast very quick let's move on to the last and the third step this is registax 6 again a free software i'm going to leave the links for these softwares in the description once we select we go to the same folder this is the folder so the asi has created ASP50, we selected 50% as the frame stacking. So this has given us this stacked image of the video. Uh, it will show you stretch intensity level. Just make it by default, say yes. You don't need to change anything on this. Okay, so this is the stacked image of 8,012 frames out of which we stacked 50% in order stacker. Now, the interesting part in Registax is that you can Bring out a lot more detail in your stacked image but first things first i'm going to do a little bit of histogram stretching and just a little bit you know i don't like to go overboard with the sliders so just a bit of stretching uh, it's too much we can always do a reset button just a teeny tiny bit of stretching not trying to okay let's try this okay this is fair enough and second thing it's already rgb aligned which we have done in the previous software we don't need to do that now we are seeing a lot um, golden color yellowish golden color we want to see saturn in a very natural color so the best way to do is rgb balance we just need to press auto balance see automatically you are seeing much natural color of satin so we are kind of done from the right hand side panel ensure that you click on the zoom panel because this is the panel which is going to show if you are kind of heading into an artifact zone if you're you know playing around too much with your slider so ensure that you have activated your zoom panel you can see your image more closely now this is uh, wavelets this is the magic wand which gives you more sharper details again a lot of stuff uh, let's leave it to default like the wavelets scheme should always be linear uh, wavelet filter is by default gaussian we don't need to change this it is giving you two options to denoise and sharpen these are the six layers of the image that you have stacked the first layer normally you know increases the details as well as the noise in the stacked image i don't play much around with the first slider let's go straight away to the second we can increase by watching the zoom panel if it is giving you any artifacts please stop and you can reset now i have reached 71.8 percent and see you can start seeing the details on the Cassini division. You can see a lot more details on the surface of the, the bands of satin are emerging. But we are not quite there. Let's do a little bit more. If we get more, that's good. We are not seeing any artifacts. So we are not overdoing something. 
and the last layer is where you see the larger details um, again be very careful if your data is not good if you have less of data if you go more on these sliders it's definitely going to give you a lot of artifacts which cannot be removed so just ensure that you know you are doing it gently and you are doing by keeping an eye on your zoom panel so that you're not inflicting any artifacts on your work we can do denoise simultaneously which is required sometimes in this image i don't see much noise but uh, let's to be on a safer side let's do some denoise Sh sharpening is something which that's why we brought this image to registax so sharpening is needed we can also get more details by playing around with other layer sliders just be very gentle you can quickly see a lot of artifacts emerge if you are not paying attention to your zoom panel or you're just thinking that by sliding it to the extreme you're going to get a better image forget it you will be inflicting very bad artifacts on your image so just be gentle very very cautiously moving ensuring that you're working towards a better image getting more details so what i'm seeing here is that we are seeing a lot more details in the saturn rings and we have seen a little bit of banding on the saturn surface now this is an iphone video so we are not kind of uh, expecting a astro dedicated image but at the same time a smartphone giving such a detailed image of saturn is something which is very exciting so uh, let's play a little more it's completely up to you your personal preference your taste how you want your images to look so i would leave that to you this is my personal choice i don't go beyond this i'm very gentle with my sliders i don't play around much and this is done at the same time i feel the image is very bright so we can play with gamma we can just decrease to see if we see yeah so we are seeing a little bit of more banding on saturn so this is good now we all we need to do is press do all so this is done our image is ready you can further process it in you know snapseed or lightroom or photoshop completely up to you your personal preference you can play a lot around with the sliders see what effects it does on your image completely your personal preference this is the way i like to work with wavelets and registax be very gentle be very cautious and the results that you see would be good oh i'm sorry yes i want to save so we're going to save in the same folder just press yes now what we have done we had raw videos mov files from our smartphone and we used pip to center the planet stabilize the planet and convert the mov file into an avi which can be used for stacking the stacking result from auto stacker was a tiff file which was this not showing much details but we took it to registax and this is the final image that we have we see cassini division very clearly we see a lot of banding on saturn's uh, surface this is how it looks after stacking the lucky imaging method of planetary imaging i'm going to leave uh, this data for you guys to practice in case you have your own data and you have uh, kind of processed using this tutorial please uh, give me a shout out in instagram i'm going to leave my instagram handle and tag me i it will make me very happy to see the results and uh, we can always learn and share things that we already know so thank you for watching clear skies and please do subscribe to the channel if you have liked and if you've learned something from this tutorial looking forward to sharing more knowledge and learning more on the way thank you clear skies